chapter 28, the skin and its functions, physiology of the skin. Impurities are constantly and imperceptibly passing from the body through the pores, and if the sur surface of the skin is not kept in a healthy condition, the system is burdened with impure matter. The burden of labor is thrown upon the liver, lungs, kidneys, and so forth, and these internal organs are compelled to do the work of the skin. The skin needs to be carefully and thoroughly cleansed that the pores may do their work in freeing the body from impurities. You have not given your body a chance to breathe. The pores of the skin or the little mouths through which the body breathes have become closed and the system has been filled with impurities. Its million little mouths are closed because they are clogged by the impurities of the system and for want of air. They breathe the same, same air over and over until it becomes impregnated with the poisonous impurities and waste matter thrown off from their bodies through the lungs and the pores of the skin. If the garments worn are not frequently cleansed from these impurities, the pores of the skin absorb the waste matter thrown off. The impurities of the body, if not allowed to escape, are taken back into the blood and forced upon the internal organs. Many are ignorantly injuring their health and endangering their lives by using cosmetics. When they become heated, this poison is absorbed by the pores of the skin and is thrown into the blood. Many lives have been sacrificed by this means alone. The Impaired Action of the Skin The surface of the skin is nearly dead because it has no air to breathe. Its million little mouths are closed because they are clogged by the impurities of the system or for want of air. The effects produced by living in enclosed, ill-ventilated rooms are these. The body becomes relaxed, the skin becomes sallow, digestion is retarded, and the system is peculiarly sensitive to the influence of cold. A slight exposure produces serious diseases. Great care should be exercised not to sit in a draft or in a cold room when weary or when in a perspiration. For fear of taking cold, they persist from year to year in living in an atmosphere almost destitute of vitality. The skin becomes debilitated and the more sensitive to any change in the atmosphere. Additional clothing is to be put on and the heat of the room increased. The next day they require a little more heat and a little more clothing in order to feel perfectly warm and thus they humor every changing feeling until they have but little vitality to endure any cold. If you add clothing, let it be but little and exercise if possible to regain the heat you need. You have worn too great an amount of clothing and have debilitated the skin by so doing. The unnatural heat caused by artificial hair and pads about the head induces the blood to the brain, producing congestion and causing the natural hair to fall off. With many, the poor, tired stomach may complain of weariness in vain. More food is forced upon it, which sets the digestive organs in motion again to perform the same round of labor. These become dis miserable dyspeptics. If this practice be indulged in for a great length of time, the health becomes seriously impaired. The blood becomes impure, the complexion, complexion sallow, and eruptions frequently occur. This is the effect of calomel. It frequently manifests itself in tumors, ulcers, and cancers years after it has been introduced into the system. The disease which the drug was given to cure, cure may disappear, but only to reappear in a new form, such as skin diseases, ulcers, painful disease joints, and sometimes in a more dangerous and deadly form. Ladies may resort to cosmetics to restore the tint of the complexion, but they cannot thus bring back the glow of healthful feelings to the heart. That which darkens and makes dingy the skin also clouds the spirit and destroys cheerfulness and peace of mind. Compensatory Action of the Internal Organs Those who are not in health have impurities in the blood and the skin is not in a healthy condition. The studied habit of shunning the air and avoiding exercise closes the pores, the little mouths through which the body breathes, making it impossible to throw off impurities through that channel. The burden of labor is thrown upon the lungs, liver, kidneys, and so forth. 
and these internal organs are compelled to do the work of the skin. These pores have become clogged and cannot perform the task allotted to them, and so the internal organs have a double task thrown upon them and the whole system is deranged. If you add clothing, let it be but little, and exercise if possible to regain the heat you need. If you positively cannot engage in active exercise, warm yourselves by the fire, but as soon as you are warm, lay off your extra clothing and remove from the fire. If those who can would engage in some active employment to take the mind from themselves, they would generally forget that they were chilly and would not receive harm. Bathing frees the skin from the accumulation of impurities which are constantly collecting and keeps the skin moist and supple. Twice a week she should take a general bath as cool as will be agreeable, a little cooler every time until the skin is toned up. Upon rising in the morning, most persons would be benefited by taking a sponge bath or, if more agreeable, a hand bath with merely a wash bowl of water. This will in remove impurities from the skin. Frequent bathing is very beneficial, especially at night, just before retiring or upon arising in the morning. It will take but a few minutes to give the children a bath and to rub them until their bodies are in a glow. This brings the blood to the surface, relieving the brain. Frequent bathing in pure salt water, followed by gentle rubbing. 